Hey folks, welcome back to Budgetography. It's been ages since our last episode. I'm now in New York City and I've got a couple of surprises for you. Have to start this episode by thanking you guys for your suggestions. You probably remember Sir Clicks a lot, the old Nikon D1X that I was filming the last episodes with. Yeah, he was just too unreliable, unfortunately. So this video, we're actually going to be going through and trying out two new cameras that I've got in to be my budgetography camera to take the Sir Clicks a lot mantle. Now, when I say newer, they're not exactly new. First one is this guy, the Nikon D3000. This is from 2009, and I bought this online used for a whopping $130, and it's in pretty great shape, but today's the first time I'll be using it, so let's see how it does. And the second one, is the D200 from 2005, and this one's $100 and change. So hopefully they both work okay. Let's take a look around the cameras. The D200 is long in the tooth, but when this came out, it really made waves. I remember reading about it in all the magazines, five frames a second, 10 megapixel, and it would do ISO 1600 with a 3200 boost. There's a couple of things I love about this, the proper locking compact flash door, even my D810 doesn't have this, but it is quite dated in the two and a half inch 230K rear screen. But overall, I have to say, it still feels great in the hand. And no surprise, the D200 was the flagship APS-C in 2005 and 6. On the other hand, the D3000 was the entry-level model, and you can kind of feel it. It's smaller, it's more plasticky, it's got a much bigger screen, but still the same resolution, and it actually shares a lot of specs. It is also a 230K screen, it's also 10 megapixel, they're both using CCD sensors, not the newer CMOS technology. This has a single SD card, it's only three frames a second. And looking at them side by side, you can see there's actually a big size difference between the two. And it's not just size, you can see the D200 has the extra dial on the front for aperture and shutter speed separated. Looking on the top, the D200 has the more pro layout of quick access buttons, whereas the D3000 has the mode buttons like portrait and sports mode. Looking at the bottom, you can see they're using different size batteries. They're both really old though, so I'm gonna need to replace those. And the D200's rubber has completely been ripped off the bottom. I'm really interested to see how these will stack up considering one was the top of the line, but it's really old. The other is slightly newer, but it was the entry level. Let's check them out. Okay, folks, so today I've got Alexis in. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. First time shooting together to come in for this series. This episode basically is for me to put these two cameras through their paces and see how I like to shoot with them and what I think is going to be best to teach you guys with. There's a fair bit of difference between the two. It's only four years and they're both old, but tech-wise, there is a fair bit of difference between the two. So we're gonna shoot in the park, on the street, and indoors to test out the low light performance. Then we'll have a look at some images together in studio and we'll work out which one should take the title of Sir Clixalot Mark II. Let's do it. Okay, so shooting with the D3000 was a little bit challenging, mainly because I found it really small in the hand. And shooting in manual mode, then having to toggle to use the one dial to do aperture and shutter speed, it's been a while since I had to do that. All of my cameras that I use in day-to-day -day life uh, you know, much more separated out. And if I wanna change ISO, there's a dedicated button for that as well. So one thing I noticed straight off the bat today, the D3000 doesn't have an AF motor. So I couldn't use my ultra cheap plastic fantastic 50 mil. I need to use the 1.4 or 1.8G model for them to be able to autofocus. But the D200 has no problem in that regard. Outdoors, again, it was just a matter of getting familiar with the cameras. Whether it's a brand new camera or an older one, you wanna take the time to get to know them. For me, the D200's more familiar and it was easier to get up and running with. I really appreciate all of the quick access buttons and it just feels better in my size hands. As a treat for these two bargain basement cameras, we stepped back into the studio and I threw a Primo 85 1.4G lens on them to see just what the sensors are capable of capturing. 
threw up an LED panel for some strong lighting. They both focus fine in this situation, but overall on the day, I think the D200 had an edge in terms of focus. So let's step back into the editing suite now and see how they actually did. Okay, let's take a look at some of these shots. I've had a little look around and I have to say, I wouldn't be surprised if these even had the same sensor. There's not a whole lot of difference. They're both 10 megapixel uh, CCD sensors, but let's just take a little look at them. So first of all, here we are starting out at ISO 200. Let's have a look at them side by side. Unfortunately, I wasn't consistent. I've shot one in portrait and one in landscape. It's the D3000 on the left, the D200 on the right. Okay, here we are at ISO 400, and this actually shows something that I really found. For whatever reason, the D3000 point, not that accurate. And sometimes when I would have the focus point on her eye, I'd get the beep beep and it would actually miss and it's got a hand or something else. Whereas the D200 I felt was a lot more accurate. Still, I have to say, even by 400, the image quality is falling off. I would say 800 is about as far as I would want to go with either one. This is 1600 on the D3000, and then this is 3200 on the D3000. So, you know, for web use, maybe, but in my opinion, it's getting beyond what I would, certainly what I would want to print with. Here's the D200 at 1600 and 3200. For me, that's significantly better at 3200 than the four year and change newer D3000. That's actually a bit of a surprise. Let's take a look at them side by side. Okay, and let's take a look at 3200. The one where she's making eye contact is the D3000. And yeah, you can see it's a lot uh, what people think of as ISO. It's a lot dottier, but there's also a lot more noise in the shadows. So interesting that the D200, which is several years older, actually is performing better considering they have such a similar sensor. Taking a look at these shots of them using the 85 mil, well, you can see the sensor certainly has capability to resolve a lot of detail if you are using a Primo lens. Not that we're going to be using this kind of great 85 mil lens for a lot of budgetography, but it does show that the sensors were really capable of knocking it out of the park. And these CCDs actually were just captured beautiful color often. That blue is the natural blue of the, the background out of the window and her skin tone coming up under the LED light, the white balance on the D200, really doing it justice. Okay folks, so after all of that consideration and shooting with these two, what do you think? Who deserves the mantle of taking the place of my D1X as Sir Clixalot for this series? After consideration of how I enjoyed using them, what their limitations are, what's gonna resonate with you guys, and sticking to the original spirit of Sir Clixalot, I'm going with the D200. The big, bulky old champion. He's still working great. It's old, I've got some new batteries for it on the way, but I really enjoy using it, and that's gonna help me get out there and do it more, make more of this series of videos. Having said that, I bought both of these for this series, so I'm going to keep the D3000 around as well. It might be my second camera in the budget kit, so we need a name for it. I was thinking, you know, Lil Wayne or Lil Kim being a smaller sidekick, but let me know what you think would be a cool sidekick name for the little guy that goes along with Sir Clixalot in the comments below. Also, let me know what you'd like to see in terms terms of future episodes on budgetography, challenges we could do, different equipment we could use that will help you and encourage you to go out and shoot with whatever equipment you have. You know, this has been done to death and I'm sure everyone knows now it's about getting out there and having a good idea and making it happen. This is just a fun way to do that and revisit some older gear at the same time. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon with more. Cheers.